Hi there guys, it's Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to present a gift to somebody out there. Uh, somebody who I was commissioned to make something for on behalf of one of their relatives. Um, a lady contacted me a couple of months ago and commissioned me to make a full fire kit uh, of lots of items that she specifically requested for a gentleman out there, uh, John Cummins. Uh, it's John's 50th birthday today on the 15th of August when this video is released and John if you're out there I hope you like the present that I made you um, it's all thanks to, to Nina who commissioned me to actually make it and uh, I've spent a great deal of time working on it making sure everything's absolutely perfect and I've even thrown some extra stuff in there for you as well so for those of you watching this video this video is a, a bit of a presentation for John there just to show him this kit show him everything I've made him so he can understand the kit properly because uh, there's a lot of items in there and if you just receive it as it is it might seem a bit confusing um, unless you're really really honed up on your bushcraft skills so John I hope you uh, enjoy this video I hope you like the kit we're going to explain everything in it so hopefully you'll get an idea of how to use it so this is the full kit I've made you and um, there's a lot of different items here uh, each one of these pouches has something in as well so that's kind of really what I needed to explain to you because there's a variety of things in there that you might not be sure how to use but you can kind of see the gist of it really in terms of what you've got if you've done a bit of bushcraft then some of these items will ring familiar for you uh, but let's start with what we can visibly see and then I'll get the pouches open one of the small items that I've made for you is this patch here this is my logo here the MCQ bushcraft logo from the channel and it's a, a four and a half centimeter by four and a half centimeter leather logo three mil thick it's pre-punched uh, so you just need to get a needle and thread and stitch it onto any garment you like. You don't need to actually uh, push the needle through it because it would be very hard to do that with such thick leather. So it's all ready to go on a garment for you and that's been waxed and burnished so it should fend off the, the weather for you as well. And the same applies to the, the ferro rod here. This is a ferrocerium rod, a, a five inch by half inch, uh, a very large one with a really nice piece of red deer antler at the top handle there. That is a particularly special one that I made and thought it would be perfect for you and I've polished it uh, so you can actually see your face in it. It's very, very shiny. Uh, we've got a leather sheath though made from the same leather as the patch, stitched with red thread and um, that's all burnished for you as well. But to open it up you just pull this cord here. It will be a bit stiff because obviously it's new and it will loosen up in time. And that just comes straight out there like that and obviously this will stay on your belt and there's the ferrocerium rod really lovely bit of antler that and some nice strong cord as well and the knots are actually stitched so they can't come undone unless you cut the stitch so I've punched straight through both sides of the cord stitched it up with with a very thick thread uh, so it can never come undone you know you're not just gonna suddenly find one day that it's all come undone and you've lost your ferrocerium rod but it just goes in like that the loop goes round you just pull the tab like this as I say it's a little bit stiff because it's new uh, but that will stay on your belt, belt and it goes up that way so it doesn't hang upside down I used to have one like that but they go up that way like that or else you get too much of this sticking up and it can interfere with your belt so um, that's a nice ferrocerium rod for you I've included a striker as well I've just put this on a separate piece of leather and you can attach it to the end of this if you want to or put it on a separate clip and that's really just because you might not be comfortable with striking it with a knife. I am, and I much prefer that, using the back of my knife. It's not just a gimmick, I actually do prefer it quite a lot. I think I've, you've got much more control and strength in a whole hand than you do in fingertips. And, uh, and I prefer it that way. But you've got a striker there, just in case you find that more comfortable. Another piece of fire lighting kit that you have is a flint and steel kit. There is a little bit of iron parietes in there but I wasn't able to source you a particularly good piece so you might have difficulty with it um, but let's see how you get on you can always let me know but it's just a small leather bag to keep this kit contained and I've lined it with a nice bit of suede as well so you can actually take that piece of leather out and lay it down and use it to put things on if you want to keep them dry but it's one by Shark Designs it's a very very nice steel striker and um, you have a piece of iron parietes as well, or marcasite as I should correctly call it. Um, this is a, a very, very small chunk. You can actually see the oxidization in there. And you can clean that up and shine it up 
and you can get sparks off of it. They won't be particularly hot, but uh, if you're if you're skilled enough and you take enough time with it, you might be able to light some of the tinder that I've gave you or given you. But this one will produce some good sparks. I've put a few pieces of flint in there for you. Um, I have some more pieces to pop in just before I send this out. You can see some nice sparks there. So that kit is ready for you to use. It's a, a nice little way of, of keeping your flint and steel kit. I didn't want to put it in with all the other stuff because it tends to rattle around and the bits of flint can, uh, can actually damage things. So you've got a flint and steel kit in there if, we, if you wish to use one. And you can just loop this up pretty easily. Just like that. Another way of making fire that I've, I've provided you here is uh, with a bow drill kit, a friction fire set um, in the form of bow drill, one of the methods used for friction fire. But I've designed the bow a little bit differently. It's actually a walking stick as well as a bow. It's quite long. I'm not sure how tall you were, John, so uh, I've just made it a little bit longer than, my, than I'd normally have a bow for myself. It'd usually come from the center of my chest to the end of my fingertips there and that would be a nice length for me so it's a couple of inches longer and um, it's suited for about uh, somebody from about five nine to six foot in terms of a walking stick uh, so hopefully this will be okay for you so you can carry it around the woods as a stick as well probably pretty good for bashing stuff as well and this is a nice bit of hawthorn here and um, came out very well actually came out really nice very smooth It'll only age with time as well, it'll get better with age, it'll smoothen off and, uh, and as you use it, it'll actually look nicer. But in terms of uh, the actual hearth and the drill, I've got you some hazel and some poplar here. So you've got a nice bow drill set there. Um, I do have some cord for you to go on this. The cord can be strung on quite easily. You can just pop the cord over the actual bow like that and it just goes over the ends there, just like this. And I've adapted that so it actually fits this drill quite nicely. You can hear that there, it's a nice, nice noise. It hasn't been waxed yet either, so when it arrives to you, it'll actually be waxed as well. But probably the nicest part of the set is the bearing block. It's the end of some red deer antler, a very large antler that I managed to get and um, I've mounted a copper cup in there and hammered it so the actual drill will stay central when it's spinning in there and um, heat shouldn't really affect this too much because the way I've put it in it should be pretty permanent really but it's very very comfortable and it's designed to go in your hand like this actually side on like that so you would place it in like this so this slanted part is on the outer of your hand on your left hand if you're right-handed, on your right hand if you're left-handed, so you would operate the bow with your dominant hand and it could be in your hand just like this. If we move into the tinders now that you can actually use with some of these fire lighting methods, I've provided you with a range of tinders. These two here are very resinous and they're from conifers. Uh, this is fatwood and if you've watched any of my videos you'll be familiar with what fatwood is. This is the resinous core of a larch tree and um, the wood is infused with resin, it can be scraped and lit with a ferrocerium rod and it's very good for wet weather conditions and I've put a leather tag on it for you so you might be able to hang it off of a belt for example if you wanted to carry it with you as an emergency bit of kit if you were struggling to make a fire. Another item is this pine pitch here on a leftover piece of red deer antler that was used to make the bearing block and the fire steel, it's all come from the same animal and you can see a huge lump of resin on the end of that bit of antler there. The actual piece of antler you might want to use for other things as well. Um, you might be able to do something with the tip of it and use it for actually working with flint for napping, but uh, that might be something that will come later on down the line and you can source your own tools for it. But uh, this is a huge bit of resin mixed with beeswax. It's also mixed with rabbit droppings and charcoal and it's a really lovely texture quite supple actually and when you heat it up you can really work with it but it makes a fantastic glue and it also uh, can be used to exaggerate a fire or perhaps agitate a fire to make it burn even brighter but I've put it in this little leather thing for you because it's very messy stuff and um, you know it's uh, it's going to get all over your other things there if you put it in the same bag as some of your other tinders 
it will just consume them and uh, on warm days it can be uh, can be really bad actually it gets quite soft so it does need to be contained in its own little leather pouch this is a nice English tan pouch, one of the extra ones I put in. And the reason I put these extra ones in is because they're really needed to control some of the messier, sharper stuff that uh, can just affect all the other tinders and ruin them. It all looks nice on display, but you want a degree of practicality to it. But these are cramp balls, and you can see already they've dusted the inside of this tan pouch quite considerably, and that is just what they do. So uh, we've got some good ones here, though. That's a really nice one, probably one of the biggest... I've found in a while. But cramp ball is a, a Daldinia concentrica is the correct name. It's a type of fungi that grows predominantly on ash. Not only ash, I've found it on other things as well. But uh, you'll find it in its greatest quantity on ash, dying ash trees or dead fall from ash trees and it's uh, an amazing tinder. And when matured and dead like these husks are here when the bracket's done its job, they produce an incredibly hot ember that burns quickly and can ignite tinder very easily. Tinder like this here you can put a spark in one of them and blow it into flame quite easily with this material here. This is the main pouch that I've made you, an extra large tinder pouch. You've got a leather brace there to stop it stretching and the, the toggle there stretching the leather at the holes there, that's generally what it's for. <clears throat> You've got a nice roe deer um, end point there as well, not from the same antler as this. Obviously this is roe, much smaller deer found in the south, and this is red deer, which is a bit further up north. So if we just... Uh, open that up for you. It's a really nice strong leather this, quite water resistant so it should last you a long time but we have a range of tinders in here. First of all something I've just put in more as a utility tool is beeswax and this is going to be used for your bowstring cord. You can use it for other things as well and it can be used to um, agitate a fire, make it burn brighter but I wouldn't use it for that. Um, it's uh, probably better used for your bow drill strings or any natural cord you choose to strengthen. I've put some jute twine in there, uh, a type of natural cordage, very nice to use, good for nest material and um, can be used to practice with and uh, I thought I'd put that in there really just to give you something to have a play around with. One nice tinder that I spent some time making um, was this amadou here and this is from a type of bracket fungi called Foams fomentarius. You have to cut out the trammer layer of the bracket which is on the very top surface. It takes a very long time, needs to be boiled and, and processed, and this is from the best part of the fungi. So it's very, very supple, and it can be lit either with the ferrocerium rod, which is pretty easy to be honest, or the flint and steel kit, uh, which is generally a traditional method of doing it. That and iron pyrites, although with iron pyrites it takes a great deal of time and preparation. If you've never done it before, you really need to practice it, but incredibly rewarding and uh, something that uh, is really quite a historical way of making fire. But uh, yeah, very nice bit of amadou there, some really nice pieces. does behave better when charred, but um, you don't need to do that necessarily if you want a bit of a challenge. I've got a bracket fungi here. This is Ganoderma australi. Uh, has many nicknames really, and a lot of the Ganodermas share the same nickname. Uh, artist bracket, artist conch, or conch. Uh, lots of different nicknames for it, but this is a nice little bracket. This has a trammer layer too, and you can make a, a poorer substitute amadou from it in the south, but uh, this can glow as one large ember. If you get a cramp ball and you light a cramp ball with your ferrocerium rod or your flint and steel if you're skilled enough, you can blow on the two together, transfer the ember from this to this, and carry this, and this can be used um, to carry fire for about an hour, something of this size. If you get moss and you pack it, slightly damp moss, and pack it into this leather bag and you push this in and draw it up, it can be carried and it limits the amounts of, amount of oxygen that actually gets to it and makes it burn slower. But you do run the risk of putting it out if it's not quite hot enough in the first place. But we've also got some birch bark in here too. Uh, some nice pieces of birch bark. They came off a tree that was pretty much perfect really for harvesting bark off of. I've got a lot more than this for you. Um, I just haven't brought the bundle out with me. And I do have some more of these drying for you too, so you'll probably find those in there when you open this on your birthday. So there are a lot more bits of bark to practice with. You can scrape this and ignite it, but this is really nice thick stuff, great for scraping, and you can burn the scraps. So we've got a range of tinders in here, and you can put all sorts of things in here if you wish to. 
even the fat wood, even the scraper, you can use this pouch to pretty much carry everything you're taking out with you, although there is a lot more here than needs be really for a fire kit. This is a complete kit. It's great for practicing with and you can choose to take parts of it out with you if you wish. So I hope this video explained everything well John, I hope you understand the kit a bit better and the items that you've got and if you're interested on really how to use them and the technique behind it all just have a look through the fire lighting session on the channel uh, there's videos on all of this sort of stuff even how to find it, how to source it and process things um, when you actually find them in the natural world so it's not just about using it in like a, a classroom sort of scenario like this it's about going out and getting them and using them and what conditions they're in, how they grow all sorts of things so um, you know there's a lot of detail on the channel if you if you do want to know it but uh, I hope you enjoy the kit again a happy birthday from me I'm gonna go home now get this packaged up and make sure it gets to you on time for today and hopefully you have got it today and for everyone else who's watching I hope you enjoyed this um, I've got many more crafts to come if you are interested um, and uh, just ask me in the comments section I'll get back to you as soon as I can so thanks again for watching take care see you again soon